Hi there everyone, Mr. Barden here. Today I'm going to be talking about audio effects and how we can route the playback of our audio files through these different effects in order to create entirely new timbres. So let's roll the intro and get right on to it. Alright, so I've got this code right here on the screen, ready to go. This shouldn't look like anything new, uh, if you've watched my previous videos, that is. If you haven't, go check them out. Um, it'll make everything look a lot uh, more familiar. But basically, all I've got here is a sound file that I've used before, the one that goes beep beep, um, loaded up in tone, and it plays when I press the button. So we can listen to that and we can hear the changes as we start adding in these effects. I'll play it a few more times just to get it in your ear. One more time because I feel like being annoying. All right, so let's get on to it. So how does this work? How can we route the audio different places? Because it's all in one place on the code right here. It's not like we're sending it elsewhere. Well, I like to think of it as if we're using virtual cables. I have my headphone cable here in order to send audio from one place to another. So right now, I'm sending the audio out the main speakers. Uh, and it would be heard. It gets picked up and recorded in the video. But if I was to take it and physically connect my headphones into my uh, headphone mixer here, plug that in, turn it up, I listen to it, put on my massive headset, and click it again, there we go. I can hear them in my headphones. We have routed the audio to a different place, this time using physical cables. And it's the same kind of idea that will kind of power what we're doing today, only instead of physically moving electricity from A to B using different kinds of patch cables. We'll be programming it all in our P5 sketch here using different kinds of algorithms and methods and commands and things like that. So I guess I should get into what is an algorithm in this context and what is an effect. So an effect is Let's see, let me pull up here the tone documentation. This is a wonderful tool. I've mentioned it a few times, but haven't really gone into it in the videos. So I'll have a link to this page in the description. Definitely check it out. This will be very helpful. But um, basically, this has everything that is in the tone library over here on the side. And you can search and find specific things um, over here. And there's this section called Effect. And these are all of the effects built into the tone library. There's other things that we can do, and we'll definitely be getting into more of them. Uh, we'll be talking about how to make synthesizers and other instruments and uh, other things, planning events, things like that. But for now, we're focusing just on effects. So each of these is essentially an algorithm or a mathematical process. That's really all an algorithm is where you put in one number, a process happens, and you get out a different number. To use a really basic example, x plus 1. You put in 5, you do x, you know, 5 becomes x, then you get out 6. You put in 6, that becomes 7. That's going to be the process, uh, again, extremely dumbed down, but that's essentially what's going to be happening here. In the computer's mind, all this sound file is that we've linked to is just a long series of numbers and it plays through them all, converts them into electricity and tell that electricity tells the speakers what to output um, in terms of the sound. So because they're all just numbers, we can use, that's not the right page, use the algorithms in order to change and process them in order to create effects. If you play guitar or do other kinds of 
um, audio engineering, you may have some hardware effects, right? Like effect pedals or a you know analog reverb or compression that are physical boxes that, like my headphones here, uh, you connected. Uh, you know, all of your sound outputs and inputs and all the wires to places. It's the same kind of idea, only instead of an algorithm, you know, a mathematical process, it's a physical circuit that is processing the electricity voltages. So same idea, only we've digitized it and moved it into the brain of the computer so we can work with ones and zeros. Now that's great and all, but what does it sound like? Well, I'm glad you asked. So there's a bunch of different effects right here uh, all along the side, um, and they all do different things. They're all different algorithms. So before we actually get into using and creating some of them, I want to draw your attention to the textbook for this course. Let me scroll back up to the top. This is a very long chapter um, just because there's mostly a large amount of examples in it. This is specifically the lesson on audio effects. So I've got this diagram right here that kind of outlines everything. We have our sound file, we use the connect method to send it to an audio effect, and then we send it out the speakers. This uh, graphic is a little outdated. The two master uh, method no longer works in tone. They have updated it. It is now the two destination that we have been using. So. I don't make the graphics for this page, I just do the text. Um, so eventually this will get updated, but just know that if you ever see to master, that means that the code is using an older version of tone, and if you were to do it, build it yourself, you'll need the to destination method instead. This shows that you can connect the output of the audio source into an effect and out to the speakers. And you can chain together as many audio effects as you need or want. Uh, so to do that, I've got a few different examples and a few important things. I'm just going to kind of go through most of these uh, examples because I think it gives us an idea of some of the more common effects, what they do and what they sound like, and how we can utilize them. So I've got this one right here. Let me scroll down just a little bit. So this has a delay. What a delay does is it takes in the, um, the incoming audio signal and it delays its output. It's, it's very straightforward in that regard. This particular code is playing with uh, a concept called wet and dry sound. The dry signal is the audio playback without the effect, whereas when it is wet, it has the audio effect applied to it. So in this particular example, let me just see how we play it. Um, all right, so we play the up arrow to start it. We're going to hear the delayed sound versus when, um, when we don't. This one doesn't always want to play. I, uh, I want to bring that down. Uh, you can hear that some of this ratio is changing. Let me start it and stop it again. So again, this, is, this slider here is playing with the amount of delay that we hear in the sound. So this way we can say, hey, I only want a little bit of this effect instead of everything else. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about sliders and using those to control the parameters in a separate video. Um, today is just about putting effects up there and having them go. All right. So this page, this bit of code right here is using a few different effects. Each of these, the free verb, pitch shift, tremolo, and feedback delay are all effects in tone. If you look at the effect, you see there's free verb, pitch shift, feedback delay, I forget what the other one was, but they're all right there, tremolo, um, right there. And we can chain them together. So just like up here where we have one, instead of going from one effect to the output, we go from one effect to another effect and so on. So we're just continually processing these numbers. 
we can do this with the dot connect method. There's a few ways we can set this up. In this particular instance, we connect them uh, just right when we make the new effect. So just like making a new tone dot player, you can make a new tone dot feedback delay. And there's a typo right there. It should be F E E D back. You know, new tone dot pitch shift and so on. This is fine and it's very condensed and concise, but there is one thing that's important to know when you're doing this. And that is you have to make the effect before you connect something to it. Meaning our code here gets read from top to bottom. So we can't uh, we can't have our sound here connected to effect one before we've made effect one. And we can't connect that to effect two before we've made effect two. So essentially, you have to build this from the speakers backwards. So you'll notice as I go down, effect four is going to the speakers. Uh, then we make effect three, which we connect into the effect we made on the previous line, and so on and so forth. We work our way back from the speakers to the sound file. So that's one thing. If you just add the uh, you know two destination the two the uh, connect methods uh, just right here when you make them, you have to build it backwards. Nothing wrong with that. It's just something to keep in mind. What I have down here are a few other ways that we can do this. All right. So what I have down here. I've, I've made this in the same order, and again, I need to fix some of these typos, um, but I got an extra period there. Um, so if you just copy this directly, you may have to fix a few typos in your code. I'll, I'll be adjusting that after I work on this video. Um, but I've made all the effects, and I've kept this in the same order, only instead of connecting them right here, I've connected them down here in Setup. And I think this makes a little bit more sense, even if it's a little bit more typing. Um, so you make all of your effects and you just say, all right, sound file connects to effect one, effect one to two, three to four. It's just right there in line. And what this will do and kind of frees it up is you don't have to worry about the ordering as much because we've already made the effects. And now the next step is we're connecting everything up. So you could change up the order. You don't have to worry about it like you do up here of everything being correctly done. Four, three, two, one. You could change up the order however you might need to. You can add stuff and take stuff out with a little bit more flexibility. One way is not right or wrong over the other. It kind of depends on how you want to work and you want to set up your workflow. So... Whatever works best for you. I just wanted to introduce both of these ways of connecting your audio. Now here's where the actual meat and potatoes of this page is. And this is the common audio effects. So what I'm going to do here is go through some of the more common audio effects, as the lesson, the title here says. This is, these are all present right here under the effect tab. Uh, on the tone documentation. I'm not going to go through every single one. A few of them sound fairly similar, but I'm going to go through the more common ones that you might be interested in or might run into in the audio processing. But definitely check out the rest of these just to see what they sound like and what you enjoy. So let's go through here. The first one, and probably the most common effect you'll find in most places, is reverb. And essentially, a reverb is a bunch of very small delays or echoes uh, that when you play a sound in it, it makes the, spa the sound appear as if it's in a large echoey space, like an auditorium or a cathedral. Um, right? It's very echoey. So I've got that right here. Um, you'll notice I say parameters. And when we make these parameters, um, we make the... Uh, the reverb, sometimes you'll notice that there's an argument that we can uh, put in to the effect. And that is what that parameter is. There's a bunch of them. So let's see, we have JC reverb. If I go to JC reverb right here. Um, you'll see right here, uh, reverb equals new tone dot JC reverb 0 0.4. What this 0 0.4 is, is that room size. 
which is essentially the bigger the room, the bigger the number, the lar- the longer the reverb is. Um, this is a number that goes in between 0 and 1. Um, so we have all of that right there. Again, if you click on this, sometimes it's not on everyone, but there's a little example. You can check out what it sounds like. I'm going to play this. I'll stop it. So it sounds very reverberant. While I'm here, I'm going to just introduce the other information on this page. Um, the Everything about the JC reverb effect is right here. Constructor is what you need to make it. So you can say it's a new JC reverb. The argument here is going to be, again, room size. Um, and we have, it tells you what it is. If it's a normal range, you hover over that, it's going to tell you this is a range between zero and one. That's it. You can't have anything smaller than zero or bigger than one. The effect will break. Um, there's all of the properties. So you can say, I want to set the context to be some something here and you can find out more about that if you go over all of it uh, but there's all the properties you can set um, let's see where are my methods if i scroll down a bit we are the do, do, do. let's let's go to connect um, so you can use the connect method to tell it where to connect different outputs things like that um, basically, again, you can hover over everything right here and see what is up with that. Um, so this is just a very useful page to see what you can do and affect with your audio effects. All right, let's get back into it. So I'm back here with these audio effects. Doo -doo -doo, and I'm just going to play these sounds. Again, I've got these sliders set up for affecting the amount and the various parameters I mean, that's going to be a different video after i go through this one of how we can customize these effects uh, but i'm just going to play this sound right here with a reverb on it i'll start it as normal so here we go We're getting the idea, so I'm going to now bring up the reverb, and you'll notice a very large difference when I play it again. Let's keep going. That Again, that was at the room size. That was set to 5. Uh, we could make it go bigger or smaller. Um, delay. So a delay, again, records sound into what's called a buffer. It, it saves the sound file uh, data, and then it plays it back after a delayed period of time. Um, this is, again, the ping pong delay. Here. And essentially, it just changes the output from your left to right speakers every time it plays back the delay. So it'll go like ba 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 out each speaker. And so we have the ping pong delay. Again, I'm going to play this with um, without the effect first. The delay time is every 0 0.5 seconds. Actually, let's make this one second. That's how often it will play back. Um, that is, uh, again, the time between each echo. And then the feedback amount is the amount of the signal which is fed back through the delay. Um, so again, the more I increase this, the more, the more times each effect will echo. So at this point, it'll be uh, about 40% about, uh, of the the sound each time so it'll be first time at full volume and then at 40 percent and then at 40 of 40 percent of 40 percent and so on and so forth until it's so quiet we can't hear it and the sound goes away so here's uh, just the sound normally And 
I'm actually gonna move up a bit so we can see all the sliders. Here's the sound with the delay effect. All right, so you can tell the difference every second it ping-ponged back and forth and you could tell a, a difference. What I have next is distortion. And this essentially overloads the signal and it makes it uh, kind of clipped and gritty. It's, it's a fun effect, kind of like, uh, you know, really cranking up the knobs on your electric guitar. Um, so I've got this right here, this uh, effect. We can affect the distortion. Again, zero is no distortion uh, versus one is all of it. I'll talk about what the other stuff means again when we're working with these sliders. Uh, but here is the distortion, and this is just a tone dot distortion. So I'm going to turn down sound normally. Here we go. So now here it is very distorted. Right. So moving on, we have a tremolo. And a tremolo is just kind of varying the volume of the effect. Kind of like going, ah. Hopefully you could, you could hear and a change in that, and it wasn't just me making weird noises into the microphone for 20 seconds. Um, but basically, it kind of warbles the sound. It gets louder and softer as we go. Um, again, the frequency parameter controls you know how fast or slow this is going whereas the depth is how much it affects the sound so let's just say no effect play back our sound let's scroll up just a little bit so we can see it All right, and now bring up so it's all you know all of the affected sound. Play it one more time. All right. So the next effect on the list is the bit crusher so what bit crusher does is it takes the bit depth of the sound essentially the resolution of of how many you know how specific all of the samples can be when this audio is recorded and played back and it reduces that it's a type of distortion um, so i'm just gonna put, i'll say i'll play it back normally but then i'll put it at four bits right about there um, and play this back all right and now let's bring up that distortion and play it again So you could tell that was a much much more gritty and kind of lo-fi uh, example. The next one here, pitch shift, does exactly what it says, and it shifts the pitch. Uh, 
generally the way we do this is by a, a uh, step or by the amount of keys on a keyboard. So if you started at um, at like C on a keyboard and moved it up one step, you'd be at C sharp. If you moved it up three steps, you'd go to E flat and so on and so forth. Um, so we can set this up to um, shift the parameter. So let's say, um, let's see, this is a different sound than some of the other ones. So let's play this back normally. All right, so we have that there. Let's bring up the effect and let's adjust it. This time we're moving it up two steps, so you'll notice it'll be slightly higher. All right, I'm gonna make it go down by nine steps, so it'll be much lower. And this time I'll make it go up by seven steps so it'll be significantly higher than than the original one this will be the last one i play just for the sake of time all right we're approaching the end of the effects on this list here but the next one we have is a chorus and essentially what the chorus effect does is it takes a sound and it it kind of delays it a little bit and detunes it just a little bit you know not enough to where it sounds like you have different pitches but where it sounds like you have multiple uh, sound sources at the same time um, so i think the best way to describe to do this is just to show you how to do it but there's Kind of three main things we can control right here: the frequency, the um, you know faster, or slower of the vibrato effects, the delay time, how much to delay the sound playback. Um, again, in, anywhere between two and twenty milliseconds, so that's very fast. And then the depth is just how again how much of the effect to apply. So I'm just going to do it completely off and on so let's play this one and now let's turn on that chorus Okay, so now we're at the last section. That was, again, some of the more common effects that you might run into and want to use. Definitely check out some more of those um, on the tone documentation. The next kind of thing is, again, talking about how to utilize those sliders um, I mentioned. That'll be a, its own video, so stay tuned for that one coming up next. Once you're able to trigger all of the effects and the sliders will move on to kind of a, a bigger project of being able to create a sound effects uh, essentially a soundboard being able to play things back and change how they sound uh, so what i want to mention here are a few different things so um, the first off is we've been using the connect uh, method in order to set all of this up that's great we can also use the chain method, which uh, again, just makes it so there's less typing. So when we have our player, 
uh, we can say dot chain and then just list out everything we want to connect it to in the order we want to do it. You know, we just say chain it from one to two to three out the speakers. There you go. Um, I think that's a very useful tool, um, but uh, it's it can be a little bit confusing if you actually leave something out. So we have all of that there. Um, and then I've made a whole video about this, um, you know, being able to set up things with the uh, tone dot players. It's slightly differently, um, but essentially what we can do is uh, we can run this uh, through this code. And I've got this code right here. Um, essentially, we can route specific sounds to different effects. Which I think is uh, a great tool, uh, but they're all loaded inside of one tone dot players object, so that way we don't have to go in and uh, make a whole bunch of objects to store all of our sounds. And the way we go about doing that is, see, I've got these two sounds loaded uh, and two different effects: uh, reverb and a pitch shifter. Um, so what I get is we go down here is. We can essentially say multiplayer dot player dot beep, you know, get the beep sound of the player and store that in a variable. And then I've got, you know, the sound I labeled down stored in another variable. And we can just say beep dot connect to reverb and down dot connect to shift. So now the beep will be reverby when we play it. And the Pew, kind of descending sound effect will be pitch shift, pitch shifted down, which I didn't play the original, but yes, it is pitch shifted down. I've got a whole video right here talking about how to set that up. Um, so you can check that out on your own. What I want to wrap this video up with, now that I've gone through my text chapter here uh, that I wrote, uh, is setting is just connecting an audio effect uh, as a way to wrap this up. So let's see, rather than using reverb, let's use, where's my effects? There we go, there we are. Let's use, uh, let's use a phaser. That's one I didn't specifically mention. Um, this can be a, a fun one. Um, this just makes some cool sounds. So we can specify three different things. This is essentially, uh, how would I describe a phaser? It's similar to the, um, what effects did I go through today? Reverb, delay, distortion, criminal, bit pressure. It's similar in how it works to a bit to a chorus. There's some delays, some filters. Uh, plays things in and out of phase. We get we get some cool kind of wow 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 kind of effects when it's used in certain contexts. Um, so let's do that. Let's just add in a phaser to this sound again. Here's that beep sound. All right. So let's add this in. So I'm going to add a variable called phaser. And I'm going to say. Phaser is going to become a new tone dot phaser. So I have that there. And I'm actually going to remove this dot to destination as well. I'll connect everything up in setup. Um, but a new tone dot phaser. What are the parameters we want to give it here? Uh, we can give it a few different ones. We can say, uh, I'm going to use the default ones they have right here in the example. There's a few ways we can specify this. We can just say, was it 15, 5, 1000? We can just say 15, 5, 1000. Um, and that'll work. We could also set it up how they have it uh, here and open it up and say, uh, use JSON notation to say, Let's see. Open up, we can say frequency and octaves and bass frequency. The name of each parameter. I 
think I've got that right. Base frequency. Yep, there's a thousand. We can set it up just like that. Um, both of them are fine. I'll, I'll leave it like this just so we can tell what each of these parameters is. The next thing I'm going to do is connect everything. I'm going to do that in setup. So I'm going to say player dot connect to phaser phaser and phaser dot connect to tone dot destination I could just say dot to destination they they're both the same thing um, so now we'll be able to play this back and we'll be routing excuse me, the player to the phaser to the destination. So let's play it back. I had a frog in my throat. All right, let's play that back one more time. All right. So again, that's just one simple effect. It's uh, nice and straightforward. We could also say dot chain to phaser and tone dot destination for the same effect. It's all right there. Um, so you, you can, I'll make this code available in the description. You can play around with it. You can switch out the effects, the parameters, uh, check out all of that. Again, this was mostly just me demoing these effects and how you can chain them together. Uh, so again, this is just a single one. Um, so we can add more of them. You can add any of the ones I've mentioned in here to look at and any of the ones under the effect tab. Those are kind of all of your options. So I definitely encourage everyone to play around with that. Uh, if you want to, feel free to share the links to your sketches. I love seeing what people make. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down in the comment section below. And like always, I will put any relevant links in the description. That's going to wrap it up for this video, so I will see you all the next time that I see you. Bye.